Can you blink, boys and girls? So can I. Does your abdomen light up when you blink? No? Are you sure? How can you tell? If you're blinking, perhaps you just can't see. Turn to your neighbor and ask him or her to watch your ab abdomen while you blink. Did it glow? No. Well, I'm not really surprised. If humans were able to produce their own light, they might never have invented the electric light bulb. We fireflies have been around long before electricity or even candles. Our light organs, called lanterns, are located in our transparent or see-through abdomens. Lanterns are lights that have a covering over the source of the light, usually made of glass. When humans first discovered us lighting up the forests, they were amazed by how much light we produced. In ancient China and Japan, people collected us in transparent jars and used us as lanterns to find their way in the dark. What does transparent mean? They named us fireflies, but we are not fireflies at all, and our light, unlike a fire, is cold. Cold light is the way your ancestors explained our beautiful magical light. Scientists now know that chemical reactions create the light, and they describe this process with a much bigger word. They call it bioluminescence. Can you say that? Bio means living, and lumen means light. I think it's a good name for it, don't you? We are living lights. Other animals and plants glow or light up like tiny electric bulbs, but most of them live in the ocean. Certain types of squid, jellyfish, corals, and even sharks glow beneath the water. Plants such as algae in the ocean can also glow on the surface of the water. At times, this bioluminescence is so bright that it looks as if someone flipped a light switch beneath the water. It's less common to find land animals that glow or give off light. I've told you that we are called fireflies, but do any of you call us by another name? Sometimes we're called lightning bugs. But we're neither flies nor bugs. We're beetles, another group of insects. Take a close look and see. Like all insects, we have three body parts, the head, thorax, and abdomen. We have six legs, two antennae, an exoskeleton, and like most insects, two pairs of wings. We undergo a complete metamorphosis, changing from egg to larva to pupa to adult. What is a complete metamorphosis? Remember, this is a change that is so big that the insect looks completely different after. Some of our eggs and larvae even glow. Have you ever heard of a glowworm? Glowworms are also misnamed. They're not worms at all. At what stage do insects look like worms? The larvae of fireflies and other insects are often called glowworms because they live on the ground like worms do and they glow in the dark. In order for any animals to survive, they must reproduce or have babies. That means we must all work hard to attract mates. Fireflies glow when they are seeking mates. The males fly through the dark, flashing very specific signals to females who sit patiently and wait for them. Our yellowish-green lights stand out against the night sky as we signal one another with special codes. When a female recognizes a male's code as being from the same species or type, she flashes the same code back to him and the male lands beside her. Have you ever noticed how some fireflies flash close to the ground with one pattern, but others seem to be higher in the air with a different flash pattern at a slightly later time of night? These are males of different species attracting their own females. Watch us next summer, and you'll see what I mean. Hi there. I bet you're surprised to see me today. I'm not bioluminescent. I don't glow, but I do sing. That's what I want to talk to you about today. Other ways that insects communicate or share information. Fireflies are silent communicators flashing their glowing lights back and forth. And what was the firefly's light organ called? A lantern. How do you communicate with one another? You talk, don't you? And what do you use to talk? <laughs> Your mouths, of course. Although we insects use mouths for eating just like you, we have no vocal cords or voice boxes, so we don't use them for talking and singing. Even though we grasshoppers can be a noisy bunch. Have you ever heard grasshoppers sing on a summer day? You won't hear any words, but you'll definitely hear a chorus of sounds. Just like birds, each type of grasshopper produces a different song. If you listen closely, you can tell what type of grasshopper is singing by its song. Of course, it may take many years of studying grasshopper sounds to be able to tell them apart. Nearly all grasshoppers have two pairs of wings, but we seldom use them for flying because we spend so much of our lives low to the ground. Male grasshoppers use their wings for communicating with one another. 
Female grasshoppers do not sing, but they listen very carefully. They hear our sounds with tympanum, eardrums on the sides of their abdomens. Grasshoppers, locusts, and crickets all make sounds by rubbing body parts together, sometimes two wings and sometimes a leg and a wing. To make sounds, I lift my wings and rub the front wings together. The vein composed of many tiny teeth on the bottom of one wing rubs against the sharp edge or scraper on the top of the other wing. It's a little like rubbing your fingers along the teeth of a comb. As the two parts rub together, the wings vibrate, moving back and forth rapidly to produce the sounds that you hear. You may be familiar with my cousin, the katydid. Katydids have long antennae just like me. As they rub their front wings together, it sounds like they're calling out, katydid, katydid. Their high-pitched calls become faster and faster as the outside temperature rises. Some people even say that you can tell how hot it is by the number of times per second a katydid chirps. If katydids live in your part of the world and you're patient enough, you may want to try counting the number of chirps you hear every five seconds. Add 39 to that number and you may have an accurate reading of the temperature, depending upon the species of katydid you're hearing. In some Asian countries, in a tradition that has been practiced for thousands of years, male crickets have been kept in cages as singing pets. Do you know where the ears of a cricket are located? You may remember that female grasshoppers hear with special parts on their abdomens, but crickets have ears on their forelegs. The front legs of animals are called forelegs. Both places must seem a little strange to you since your ears are on the sides of your head. Before I leave today, I want to introduce you to another singing insect. These insects are often mistaken for grasshoppers and crickets because they look a lot like us. Does anyone remember what this insect is called? This is a cicada. Cicadas are related to aphids, leafhoppers, and spittlebugs. Unlike grasshoppers and crickets, many cicadas have strong wings and are fast, fast flyers. Male cicadas produce incredibly loud songs, but they do not use their legs and wings to make those sounds. Look closely at the abdomen of a cicada. On its underside, close to the thorax, a cicada has a pair of sound-producing organs called timbals. These ribbed membranes are a little like the skin of a drum. The cicada uses its muscles to vibrate these drum-like organs. To vibrate means to move back and forth very fast. The timbals pop and click as they move in and out. Their sound is amplified or made louder inside the mostly hollow abdomen, acting like a drum and creating a loud buzzing song. The shrill sounds of hundreds or thousands of cicadas singing together on a warm summer evening may be very, very loud. Grasshoppers, crickets, and cicadas all use sound to communicate in much the same way that fireflies use their lights. Males attract females for the purpose of mating, making sure that these winged insects will continue to survive. Next time you gather to discuss insects, you'll learn about the largest group of insects on Earth. Can anyone guess what that might be?